Hello and welcome to another edition of Mark's Madness, postseason edition this week. It's week 13 alongside Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Regional finals coming up. There's 56 teams mm -hmm. left playing high school football in the state of Ohio. And if you made it this far, you knew you did something right. Hey, you're really good. They're all good from here on out. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's recap the regional semifinals and begin in Division mm -hmm. Two with Lima Senior falling to LaSalle 49 13. Yeah. Spartans' great season comes to an end. Jeremy Larkin, 225 all purpose yards, three scores in this game for LaSalle. We knew LaSalle was good, yeah. and the Spartans were up against it. This game got out of hand. Yeah, what, you saw what Kevin Fell said about Larkin. You know, best back he's ever coached against. And LaSalle is really, really good. They've got skill that can match Lima Senior. Uh, they've got depth, they've got size, they've got tradition, you know, defending state champs. But boy, what a season for the Spartans. Uh, you know, you, if you can play for a track championship on the last game of the season, that's a good year. Now, they didn't win it, but they are right there. And then to win a playoff game, that's something they hadn't done for a while. So that program is, is on the up, and Kevin or uh, Mike Fell has done a great job down there. Yeah, to think about where, where they were just two years ago, and then, you know, they had the 5-5, five and five, the 8-2, and two, and then this season, the playoff victory. It, it, they've really come a long way, and there's a lot of excitement surrounding that community, but they are graduating some, some talented skill guys, including Ruben Flowers III, yeah. who has now played his final game with the Spartans. There's some great skill, but, you know, he's graduated some really good players the last couple of years, too, and guys just fill in, you change the name. So we'll see if that can happen again next year. All right, moving on to Division Three now in Wapakoneta. They played in another close mm -hmm. game. Defense, the story in this game, is they defeat Mountain Healthy 12-7. to Yeah, it was a great game, and they knew it. Uh, you, you heard uh, what Coach Moyer said in the paper last, you know, and coaches always kind of predict things out. They thought Mountain Healthy was going to be right there in the, in the finals, and Wapak got them and knocked them out of that. So it wasn't a surprise that they were really, really good, and, and you know, they had a great, you know, some good players too, obviously, but Wapak hung in, hung in there and won a game that was a little, you know, you got to kind of battle and win one of those ugly ones every now and then. And in the playoffs, you got to get lucky even occasionally. I don't know that this was their lucky game, but it was their grinded out game. So good for them. And, uh, you know, they got Trotwood coming, which will be a little different kind of team. But Yeah, before we get, we, we, I want to talk about Trotwood because we remember what happened last year, of mm -hmm. course, and, and they've got a guy who's just lighting it up right now. But this game, three to nothing at the half against Mount Healthy. Cameron Locke scores. Wapak was winning 3 to nothing at the half. Cameron Locke scores a five-yard touchdown with 7.21 left. When you get in these tight games, and Wapak, you know, they're, they have offensive power and their defense has been strong all year. Mm -hmm. What does it say about a team to be able to grind out this type of victory, and does that give them momentum going forward? Because they had been winning pretty easily heading into the yeah. postseason. Well, I think it tells you that you're well coached. You know, you, you don't have to do what you've done before to be able to be successful. They hung in there. They gave up lots of yards, 226 yards rushing, but they got three turnovers. That kind of negates the, the yardage. Plus, if you just let them go between the 20s, they're not going to hurt you unless they kick field goals all the time. So I think it says that that's a complete team, and the coaches prepared them to win in a lot of different ways, and that's why they're good and why they're still playing. Undefeated on yeah. the season. So now yeah. they'll deal with Trotwood Madison. Last year they lost in four overtimes in this regional mm -hmm. final round. This mm -hmm. year Trotwood is impressive. And they yeah. get Ravion Hargrove, 371 yards. This is their running back on 35 mm -hmm. carries, five touchdowns in their win <laughs> in the regional semifinals. So maybe he's we'll, tired. Maybe, maybe, we'll maybe they wore himself out. I don't know. Yeah. He also, I, he's yeah. the, this is the team that defeated Salina as well. And he had a huge game in that one too. So the Wapak defense going to be tested again. They will. But you know what? Coach Moyer, he can stop one guy. You know, it, 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 it's balanced it really. And we'll look at some other teams still playing that are very balanced. Wapak can throw the ball. They'd rather run it, but they can throw it. We're going to find out if Trotwood can, th can throw it because I'll bet he, he, he to take tries away to start Har Harger Grove. Now, he's great. Yes. So you're not going to completely shut him down. But, you know, 371, give him 150, and you've done a great job. And this game will be at? Spartan Stadium in Lima, so yeah. a much shorter trip for Wapak. Don't know if that factors in at all, but hey, Trotwood's got to drive 75 miles. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe, something to maybe think they'll about. fall asleep on the way up here. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> all right, Division Four now. OG falls to Bishop Hartley, mm -hmm. and we know Bishop Hartley's a very good team as well. Yes, yeah. Three interceptions for the Titans, so the Hartley defense was yeah. good. And OG, you know, playoff victory. Their season mm -hmm. comes to an end, but again, nothing to hang their head about. No, you won eight games. That's a good, good year. Coach Schreiner had them playing again, and. We did them in the game before that, and they were very impressive. Turnovers, you know, you, you, they come for a lot of different reasons, and they just hurt the team. It's nobody, no individuals, you know, fault all the time. But uh, good year for OG, the Titans. Yeah, congrats to the Titans. And so it happens this time of year. We, we really start dwindling down, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's not always easy to get to the regional final. 
except for one team, it appears, Coldwater, <laughs> who is there again yeah. after cruising past CHCA. PD Post, three touchdowns, and they started fast again. And this was a rematch of last year's state semifinal for the two schools. That's kind of their moniker. You know, get out of the gate fast and then either expand it and rest in the fourth quarter or, you know, hang on for dear life, which, which they haven't had to hang on very much. But here's the balance I was talking about earlier. They rushed for 202, threw for 208. And Helmogarn was 18 of 20. I mean, that's efficient. That score, you know, probably wasn't indicative of really the beatdown that they, they supplied. But uh, Brookville's going to be a little tougher for them. But uh, Coldwater's been there before. You know, the common opponent, Anna, they both played Anna. Brookville beat them 21-0, Coldwater 40-7. So I don't know if you can draw a whole lot from that. Brookville's good, no doubt about it. They, they score a lot, and they have a good defense. Under 10 points a game, not quite as good as Coldwater's at 5 points a game. But uh, it's a good team. Hey. Coldwater's defense gave up 14 points for the second time <laughs> this season. The other, yeah. the la other time was Marion Local. But just to, see, just to show you how dominant their defense That's has right. been. Yeah. And Brookville's the top seed in this region. Yep, two 12 and 0s going at each other. You know, the, the one thing that you that is hidden in all the rankings and seedings and all that is how have you been tested throughout the year? Nobody at this level is tested like you are in the MAC conference. All right, so Brookville may have played some good opponents. They beat Anna, that's a good opponent. Um, but they haven't played week in and week out what Coldwater's done. All right, let's go to Division Six now, Mark, in Region 20. Tenora beats Colonel Crawford 28-23. Yeah. And they had a big special teams play late in this game mm -hmm. where they pinned them on the one yard line with two minutes to go. And now Tenora's back in the regional final mm -hmm. for the second straight season. Yep, Tenora's good. You know, they're, they're, they're down the trail every year, and uh, they look to be even a little bit better this year than maybe normal. So that's going to be a tough out for anybody. Remember last year they missed a field goal <laughs> against Minster, drove down the field mm -hmm. and had the game-winning field goal lined up, missed it against Minster, and Minster went on to win the, the yeah, D6 state title. They ran into the Magical Mystery Tour last year with Minster. You right. know, everything was going right for them. They earned it, but they, they had a lot of things fall their way. And, this year, they're hoping some luck falls their way. But a lot of returning guys on that mm -hmm. team who have been to the regional final before. Mm -hmm. And now they'll take on Van Buren, who knocked <laughs> off Delta 29-28. And this game, I was at this game, but I wasn't there for the end because I had to get back to the station. But uh -huh. the ending of this game, Nick DeVore, a game-winning one-yard yeah. touchdown as time expires to give them a one-point lead. The, they're facing another team that's got that magical thing going. 0-3, yeah. oh now they're 9-3. This They're going for a 10-game win streak in one season. Um, yeah, you don't put anything against Van Buren. You know, I, I think Tenora is probably the better team, but I'm not saying they're going to win on, on the weekend. You know, this Van, game, Van Buren's got it going. This game's going to be a very interesting one. And if I, you had to make a pick right now, you going with Van Buren? Well, kind of. I'm rooting for yeah. him. You know, we did him earlier in the year, and I like those kids. I like that coach. I think they play hard. And, and when you go 0-3, it's easy to sack the bats and get ready for basketball season. And these guys didn't do it. Right. They said, we're not done here, and they're still playing week 13. And this game will be at Donnell Stadium in Finley. Yeah, their backyard. Saturday. Yeah. All right, Region 22 now. Marion Local wins again, 34 mm nothing -hmm. versus West Liberty Salem. Business as usual, defense clamped down a little bit in this one. Remember, they gave up a season high 23 points last yeah. week, but this, this week, a shutout. So that's <laughs> yeah. encouraging. And that's something, 23 and then... You pitch a shutout. I think yeah. maybe the coaches encouraged a little better defense this week. They had a couple turnovers and mm -hmm. returned one interception all the way mm -hmm. for a touchdown and the other to the three-yard line, which set up a touchdown yeah. on the next play. So then Marion Local now draws Mechanicsburg after yeah. Mechanicsburg defeated Jefferson handily. Yes. Yeah, handily is right. Uh, they're putting up 46 a game. Um, they've got skill. This is going to be the game of the – Game of the week. Looking forward no to this. No doubt one. about it. Yeah. This is a great one. I did not see Mechanicsburg, but some of our crew did, including my partner, Mark Shine. He said they are the real deal. And uh, you, never, you never pick against Tim Goodwin, but uh, he said this, this will be a game. They racked up a lot of rushing yards against Jefferson. And after watching Jefferson hold Spencerville's rushing attack two weeks in a row to what they did and really limit them, Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be impressed with what Mechanicsburg did. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that Jefferson was a little worn out by playing their rival in back-to-back -back weeks? You know, I hadn't thought about that until you posed that question to me earlier in the week, and, and I agree with you. I mean, it, kids are flexible. I think the coaches probably move on because they, they understand. They've got the perspective of age and time. But, yeah, you know, how many times can you get up and play in a very emotional game, one, you know, that means a lot, and it not takes some energy out of you? I think maybe it probably did. 
Well, Maybe, probably. How about that for yeah, skirting the issue? Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I, I don't know either, <laughs> but I figure that that when you play your rival back-to-back -back weeks, it could take a lot out of you. And maybe they were just worn out and ran into a really good team. Yeah, they're really good. That yeah. we know, according to Ben Reif, who spoke to some of the Mechanicsburg yeah. fans, they are very hungry from last year's That's loss right. to Minster yep. in double overtime. Yeah, they can't get to Minster. Maybe they'll try to get to Marion Local. But, you know, Jefferson, what a great year. Yes. And they, Chris Summers, you know, NWC phenomenal again. job. Yeah, yeah. Can't be discouraged about losing to a team like that. Right. All right, let's finish up with Division 7 now. McComb on top of Lipsick, 35-12. to 12. Jake, Krause, Jake Krause scored three touchdowns. The game was actually 12-7 Lipsick at the half, so McComb using a big second half. And remember, they just squeaked by Crestview the yeah. previous week. So Been challenged a couple yes. of weeks in a row, and that's good for them because they weren't challenged after week one when you know they got beat by Marion Local by just a little bit, 24-22. They really hadn't been challenged much. Um, they still ended up with 316 yards rushing. You rush for 300 yards in a game, Unless you turn it over a whole bunch of times inside the 10, you're probably going to win. Uh, but Lucas is, you know, they're pretty good. They lost to Danville. That's their only loss. And Danville's 12-0 and 0 still playing. Right. You know, so uh, these are two good teams. And uh, it'll be fun to watch that one, too. That one will be They're a good all one. fun at this yeah, stage, this, this, I mean, of course, we've got yeah. best of the best going against yeah. best of the best in the, in the regions here. Lucas beat Calvert 44-35. And Jake Krause, that, that big game, he's a big physical running back, mm -hmm. and I think they'll want to get him going again against Lucas. We'll yeah. see. We'll yeah. see how that one McCombs plays out. has got some big, strong guys. Yes. You know, Lipsick there. was able to battle that a little bit with their own big, strong guys. You know? Yeah. Good season for Lipsick, and, and they mm -hmm. improved as the season went along, too. They did. And I, yeah. they've now made the postseason seven straight years and even That's picking, amazing. Up, picking up the win this year. Yeah. So there's a lot to be proud of in Lipsick as well. It sure is. Yeah. All right, final region, region 26. Minster over Riverside, 21-6. Mm -hmm. to six. You called it with yep. – our buddy Mark Shine, mm -hmm. who will be back for Mark's Madness basketball season starting shortly as won't well. Won't be long. Yeah, it won't yeah. be long. The basketball season's yeah. around the corner. So show us how they did it. Take us through a couple of the plays. Josh okay. Nixon had a big game. He's one of the best yes, quarterbacks in the area. Yeah, he's got a great arm. And, you know, anytime you've got a strong arm and confidence, you make things happen. Here he is throwing the fade to the mismatch. It's not Eli Wolf this year, but it is Jacob Dews. And Jacob is six foot three, and they really use that to their advantage. Watch this. He set it up nice. Looked like it was going to run a slant. Breaks to the outside. And look at that throw. Right over the helmet of the defender and right into Dews' hands. That was huge. That was the first score of the game. You're going to see deja vu a little bit later. But next we're going to see Evan Hillsman. He's a running back. Now watch how many misses Evan makes. Look at that. Hop over, hop beside, jump around. And then uh, because the kid had a, a head of steam up, he could not run him into the end zone. But what a great run. That came at a very important time. You can see only a one-point lead. Here you see it from the ground. This is what the defenders are trying to grab. Look at that. Guy falls. There's another guy that falls. Uh, guy's blocking downfield. That's Dews blocking. So not only does he catch, he also blocks. That's a great run by Evan Hillsman. And then you're going to see another fade. Other side of the field will stop and go fade into the end zone. And watch Dews rip it out of the defender's hands on this one. This was, again, a good throw because you lay it up for your tall guy. Right there's a little stop and, stop and go. Good timing by Nixon. And there is the strong hands by Dews into the end zone. And they scored another time after that to make it 21-6, to and they won that game. Right, 21 and unanswered for yep. Minster. So you like to see that battling back mm -hmm. against a good Riverside team. So the Wildcats looking good as the top seed in Region 26. Mm -hmm. Now they'll battle with a familiar foe <laughs> in Fort Recovery, who defeated Lehman Catholic 20-3. to yep. Caleb Martin, two touchdowns. Will Holman, a rushing score in this game. Yep. And Fort Recovery, Minster, this game was so close when they played each other week seven. It was a 14-12 yeah. win for Minster. Uh -huh. what needs, what's going to happen in this game? Well, can, you, can you predict anything? Yeah, yeah, they know each other. The coaches know each other. It's a rivalry. They play each it's going to be awesome. You know, Minster's second week in a row at uh, Sydney Stadium. I mean, does that give you some familiarity? Maybe, maybe not. I think this is a flip them. You know, these two teams, uh, they've both had great years. Minster trying to get back to where they were last year after a good regular season. Uh, Fort Recovery kind of doing first in their program all along this season. First home playoff win and all that stuff. Uh, this will be a great, great game. All MAC regional final, and that's, Isn't that something? Something you, you got to have a for. MAC team playing a MAC team to get one of them out of yeah, the tournament. Yeah, it's usually how that's it goes because like. yeah. the two NWCC teams fell to MAC teams this week yeah. in, in Division Seven. So, yeah. 
That will be very interesting. Before mm. we take a look at our rebroadcast schedule, what's what's the one game you're most <laughs> looking forward to? I know you were excited about Mechanicsburg, <laughs> Marion Local. Yeah, give that, me all three. That. What are you what are you looking forward well, to? Well, Marion Local, Mechanicsburg, just because of the skill, you know, and the tradition. Walpock and Trotwood, I think, is going to be very interesting. Yes. You know, uh, looking forward uh, to that one. History on there, that side too, and then the rematch, Minster and Fort Recovery. I mean, I don't know how I pick, uh, you know, one over the other. I I got to have three monitors watching those three games. Well, you can just keep it on WOSN all week long because those are three of our rebroadcast games. We have four awesome. this week. Let's take a look at the schedule. It all begins Friday, 11.30 p.m. on WTLW with Wapak versus Trotwood. And then Friday, 11.30 on WOSN, Fort Recovery versus Minster. Saturday, doubleheader, begins at 9 p.m. Coldwater versus Brookville. And then that third game you're looking forward to premieres Saturday at 11.30 p.m. Mechanicsburg versus Marion Local. Looking forward to it all. We'll be back next week with a state semifinal Thanksgiving preview. <laughs> Looking forward to that. But until then, thank you very much as always, Mark, and enjoy the games this weekend.